Now that we've gone through structure and conduct, that leaves us with our final part of the SCP paradigm, performance. Performance is all about the outcomes in a market. Structure tells us how things are all set up. Conduct talks about how the firms are going to behave and performance looks at how does it all shake out in the end. There are two main ways to look at this, profits and social welfare. Profits are simply measured as revenue minus cost and social welfare by total surplus. We talked about total surplus back in chapter two, week three of the course, and we calculated total surplus by adding up the consumer and the producer surplus. Profits tend to vary widely across industries and within an industry can also vary by firm depending on a lot of different things. We might have one firm that has more efficient technology than another, or more effective advertising, or we might simply have an industry that has more concentration and more market power that's going to lead to more profit. We should note that profit is tied mainly to the firm's ability to price above cost. Usually the main factor there is how competitive is the industry. I'll also point out that high profit industries may not necessarily be high social welfare industries. Profit, of course, is part of the overall welfare of society, but it's certainly not all of it. And sometimes higher profit can come at the expense of consumers. As we go through the course and look at different market structures, profit is going to vary greatly. And it's going to be one of our main ways to think about the differences between these different market structures. We're also going to spend a lot of time thinking about social welfare, that is, the economic well-being of society as a whole, not just the firms. We'll get to this next week, but as a preview, perfect competition is the market structure where total surplus is maximized. That is, we have reached a socially efficient outcome. Now in real life, as I've said, perfect competition is not the most realistic thing, but it is an interesting idea to look at. Most industries in real life are imperfectly competitive, which means there's some market power there. Firms have some ability to raise prices, maybe not as much as in a monopoly, but it happens nonetheless. Whenever firms have market power, price goes up and quantity goes down. And that means that we have moved away from the socially optimal amount that we would get in perfect competition. The Dansby Willig Performance Index is a way that we can rank industries according to how much the total economic well-being of society would improve if output were slightly increased. In perfect competition, output is at just the right amount, but when we don't have perfect competition, our quantity is too low. What that means is that in most industries, increasing quantity and lowering price would be good for society. And this tells us how close we are to that socially optimal outcome. Let's look at a few examples of Dansby Willig performance indices. Textiles and apparel both have pretty low Dansby Willig indices, which means that society doesn't gain quite as much by pushing out the production of those goods. On the other hand, chemicals is the highest one here, which means that society would gain the most by the chemical industry expanding its output. This broadly suggests that the chemical industry has a lot of market power going on uh, and they are holding back their production more than society wishes that they would. 